My name is Peter Hanson. I'm born at a place called Mount Dorian, which is about 50 k's aside of uh, Uendamere. Born into the Walpuri tribe. Mm -hmm. And as a child, I was uh, picked up under the uh, the uh, Forced Removal Act and taken to the bungalow, which was sometimes in the mid 40s. <coughs> Uh, they took me to the bungalow, which is the old telegraph station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, spent a cold winter there. Mm -hmm. Just got by the uh, weather here. Spent a winter there, it was freezing cold. And uh, when the warm weather started, they shifted me from there to Phillip Creek, which is just below Elliot. Mm -hmm. There was a Phillip Creek mission there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they took a lot of kids from other areas there as well. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was for the wet season. And uh, after the wet, they decided they had enough kids there, so they were going to send us to Darwin and to a place called Red Dixon. So they loaded it up next dry. Uh, this was 40... Six, I'd say. <coughs> Excuse me, forty-six. I would be only about three years old. Eh? Maybe, okay. maybe three yeah, or four. Three. Yeah. yeah. And I, I can just remember bits and pieces of it, you know. But anyway, they picked us up and put us in the old woods. As we're driving away from the community, we cross an old uh, dry creek bed, you know, which is quite wide. Yeah. <coughs> And while we were going across there, we saw some of the old women running across. And uh, being the youngest, I suppose it affected me more. I just climbed out of the, the truck, hit the deck, and I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I took off and ended up with the Aboriginal for another three years before they tracked me down and got me the, I'd say, for the third time now. The okay. first time was at uh, Mount Dory. Yeah. Se second time they took me away from Philip. And then the third time was on the highway when they picked me up. Okay. So that would have been 49. So 40, yeah, that was 49. And then a fellow by the name of Les Pennell and Ted Evans picked me up. And then a creamy hole in Newt. Okay. It looked pretty new then, so that must have been one of the first holes mm. yet. Mm. Anyway. Mm. They, we drove all night. They continued on to Darwin and they dropped us off at uh, Red Addiction. We overnighted there and next morning onto the boat. They weren't going to leave me there, not after I ran away. Onto, yeah. the, onto the boat and straight out uh, to Croker. Right. I yeah, went out on a boat called Arrowetta, which is one of the old curling luggers. Yeah. Out to Croker. And that's where my life began at Croker. All my uh, schooling, learning how to work mm -hmm. at a very early age, from 12 onwards, uh, right through to my late teens, before we uh, were. We didn't actually want to leave the island. I think they passed a policy then that we. When you turn 18, you have to leave the That's island. Right. Yeah, mm. You had no choice. So we, we left. If we didn't, uh, but, uh, you know, got the police out there to remove us. Sure. Yeah. So they tell us. So anyway, we came to Darwin, and, and they, well, I got a job there. Well, they managed to find me a job there working with a, an aircraft, a light aircraft company, mm -hmm. Charlie Company. And I worked. When I started working with him there, uh, the fellow that owned it, we already knew him because he had the uh, mail run out to all the communities. Mm -hmm. <coughs> his name was Doug Muir, and his father's name was Frank. And I'll go back to Frank mm -hmm. and back to the island. Frank because, Mueller? Yeah, yeah. He was working with a mining company that was doing exploration work at Kroger. Mm -hmm. And when they finished up, they, because Frank was a carpenter, they asked him to come in and, and uh, set one of the old cottages up as, as a shop. 
Mm -hmm. So he did the carpentry work and I gave him a hand with it till he finished it and that's where I met Frank. And then mm -hmm. I don't know how it happened but I ended up working for his son in Darwin who owned the light aircraft company. Okay. And that's how I ended up coming out to Murala Park. Okay. Because Frank owned it. That's where the Muir part of Murella Park. Yeah, it came from yeah, Doug yeah. Muir. Yeah, okay. And Frank Muir. And that's mm -hmm. how I ended up at Murella Park. And I gave Frank and uh, Fred Hunter a hand to put that airstrip in there. Okay. So I used to do some work there, then I'd go back and, yeah. and uh, work at the Lord of Craft. How and old were you then? I'd say 19 years, just, just a guess. Okay. Uh, and there was only Frank and. and uh, Fred Hunter there and, and the Aboriginal workers. And there was others around here like at uh, Mudgeon Bridge Station. Mm -hmm. And then of course there was the uh, uh, the ones at Owen Pelly, mm -hmm. you know, one was uh, what I'd call it today. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that was my connection to here coming backwards and forwards. And okay. uh, we used to go up and see Alan Stewart up there at Nalangi. See old Yorkie Bill do a run down to uh, Mudgeon Bay and back, so that's how I sort of got hooked up. One of the things I was standing out there was that old Frank went out one day with a tourist and uh, decided they were going to go and uh, shoot a buffalo, you know. Mm. And while walking through the jungle, see the billabong just alongside the airstrip there, well, just on the edge of that is a bit of a jungle as well. They went walking there and uh, ran across a buffalo and bull there. And he charged. Mm. Then they had time to load. Yeah. And he hit old Frank and sent old Frank through the air. And then uh, sort of pinned him to the ground and knelt on him and mm. was trying to crush him, you know. Yeah. And, and the tourists couldn't load the. He panicked. Yeah, of they course. couldn't get the bullet in, and it, it, a bit of a lip there somewhere, it used to get caught if it went too quick. Anyway, he just got the rifle and smashed it over the buffalo, and that's, that's really what saved uh, Frank's life. It saved his life, yeah. And I think after that, that was pretty well the end of it, I think he decided he was going to move on, because if you're well and truly in your 70s and you got knocked by a buffalo, yeah. you know, you're not going to perform too well after that. <laughs> <laughs> but then, then after I'd seen 64, Five, I think 66, somewhere there, you know, I ended up with the uh, Forestry Commission and we used to still come through here and out to Manangroon and Morganella and places like that where okay. the Forestry Commission used to work. And uh, then I started wandering after that, travelling around Western Australia, over into the Gulf area and into Queensland. And uh, worked my way around everywhere and then even went to WA there in 99, did some uh, road work for the communities. Prior to going there, I was at the mine, you know, down at the Granite, and I'd done a bit at, uh, at the Tanner Mine. And but before that, I, I spent time doing road work with uh, machines like raiders and those, loaders and trucks. And before that, I, was, uh, I did a lot of uh, stock work on station doing cattle work. Of course, on the island we did a lot of cattle work while growing up because it was a mission station. Yeah. And we had quite a few head of cattle there. Yeah. Yeah, we had 1,500 or more cattle there on the island, so we had to muster them twice a year. And then uh, put them back out to the, uh, what we call the open, non-paddock area, mm. what we used to call the run. You mm -hmm. just left them out there, which is the floodplain area. Okay. You leave them there for the dry, then when the wet starts, you wait for a couple of weeks till the grass you know, comes up a bit. You go and pick them up, and then you put them back out into your holding paddocks for the wet weather. Okay, for the, for the wet, yeah. Yeah, then when the dry comes, you got to pick them up, do your mustering, car, castrating, and dipping, and whatever, mm -hmm. and, and then put them back out there again. So was, it, was your wife with you early in the piece when you were travelling around and working around like down yeah. the Gulf area, yeah, there. Okay. When, when she came in from the island <coughs> in 62 or, yeah, I uh, 
we ended up, a couple of years later, we ended up together again, and then, then uh, in 69 we started travelling. We only had two girls then, and we started travelling. Okay. Travelled everywhere. Hmm. Working all the time. And the children had to fit into my plan and not me fit into theirs. <laughs> <laughs> Not like today, if people have children, they're going to pull up. <laughs> yeah. 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 You all feel like you're one family.